Yes, it will be recorded to everybody um, so that we can send it out after um, for anyone who wasn't able to attend or if you want to watch it again. So it is now recording. Yeah. So I think we're ready to get going. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, if you've been with us before, you know we're on a new platform here. Um, so uh, just appreciate your patience. Uh, I think we've got all the bugs worked out. But, I mean, if you saw the email on uh, – it was, was what? Friday, Friday, Thursday, something Thursday, Friday, I don't know, yeah. where the link just decided to not work anymore. So I don't know, maybe there's still a few bugs to work out, but I think um, this is going to be a good platform. Uh, it provides for just a little bit more engagement, um, allows us to do a couple of more extra things uh, on here as well. But uh, while we're kind of jumping into this, for those of you in here, go ahead and drop uh, your practice area and where you're located uh, in the chat. Uh, get to know each other, throw some questions out there. Uh, we're going to have some time uh, to, you know, have a couple of little discussion points along the way and um, always going to have make time for any additional questions at the end. And we're also going to have uh, a really cool announcement that uh, you guys are actually going to be the first to know about uh, at the end of this. So I think I should probably start sharing my screen. That would be a thing to do. Let's see. How can I do that? Can you give me permission to share? Um, it's not asking me. I can share mine. But, oh, no, that's, but it's not That's asking your me. screen share. I know screen we did share. this before. I don't think we did. Maybe. But I'm a co-trainer. So, well, try, see, this try. is what I was talking about. <laughs> Working out Weird. a couple of the bugs there. So does it have the option for you at all? And it just won't No, let you? it doesn't. It just says microphone and camera. Awkward. So mine has it. Um, send it to me real quick and we'll be okay. good. <laughs> That's fine. We can do that. Alrighty. Um, do, do, and do, then do. I'll, I'll... We'll cut all this through. out of the video so it's like... So anyone who watches it afterwards will just think, wow, they did this without They're any so problems whatsoever. These guys are really good at what they do. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's, let's try this. So we're going to pull that up and... Wow, share screen. We're going to go with the window right here. Oh, okay. How how are we looking? Great. So can I make you want to go like full, full screen, screen so we don't see all of your tabs that we have open? I want you to see that I have my email up and yeah. just browsing on those. Maybe reply all to right. them for me. Well, that's fine. <laughs> all right. So now we can officially get going. Thank you all for being here. Um, kind of revisiting a, a, a tried and true topic Um that we've discussed a few times before, but uh, it's just some things that are more important for your overall marketing strategy than SEO. Uh, you know, it seems like every other marketing company out there is pushing SEO as like the thing that you should be primarily focused on. It should be the foundation of your marketing strategy. And that is just something that we have never, ever truly believed. Um, and we'll get into a couple of reasons why right off the bat uh, first, but uh, if we want to, go to the next one oh, I, gotta come, yes. I gotta come up with like a hand signal for the for the yeah. next one that'd be great there actually, we go yeah so yes uh <laughs> i am john henson i am the uh marketing manager here at spotlight branding uh soon to have a new title actually um <gasps> title number seven i've moved around a lot here um, <laughs> which is either a good thing or it's worrisome that they cannot find a place for me yet after all these years here but I'm going to take it while I'm still here. Um, but yeah, I'm marketing manager. Uh, I handle all of our internal marketing here, all of our content that we create and all that kind of good stuff. And I'm Jana. I'm the business development manager here. Um, I think it's only like my third title, so I'm behind. Um, but I am basically the front person um, for those interested in learning more about what we do. Um, you usually will talk to me if you book a call with us. Um, and that's kind of my role is to elaborate on what we do and see if we'd be a good fit. So that's, I'm yep. in the red. You should, you should flip the slide. You're in control of that. Now. I was, I was getting there. You know what? I like to pause for dramatic effect. Oh, okay, cool. My, so my yeah, style. before we dive in, I uh, wanted to let you guys know if you haven't yet, definitely check out um, a couple of a podcasts that we do that I host uh, law firm marketing minute. We're getting close to 300 episodes over there. Um, just a weekly show, um, usually only about 10 minutes long, but a lot of great marketing business development advice going on over there, just in short, very easily digestible episodes. And then uh, Center Stage is our new podcast. We're not really new anymore. We're 40 episodes in now. But um, 
where I interview just other attorneys, some other industry experts and covering just some marketing business development hurdles um, that most, if not all of you have faced along the way. And it's just really good to get that outside perspective and just the insight from people who have been in your shoes and have figured out ways to overcome and improve and do a lot of things well. So um, that comes out, that show comes out every Wednesday. Um, we just had an episode come out today. I uh, had a great conversation uh, just talking about how to put on more engaging uh, workshops and webinars. So hopefully I have taken that advice to heart we have and hopefully we're going to do a good job with that but um good good advice for you all as well especially if you're going to get into holding some virtual or in-person events some lunch and learns things like that so um we can move on here and uh Got yeah it, jump in to our topic here so why isn't seo important for your marketing strategy um and there are a lot of things especially with solo and smaller law firms that make it just not the best idea for you to focus on. You know, you can have it as part of your marketing strategy later on, but there are a lot of things that you should be putting more importance on first. And we'll get to those in a second. But the reason that we don't really put a lot of emphasis on SEO, first of all, is that it's li very limited real estate. You know, so like while I'm talking, if you want to open up another tab in your browser and just search for, you know, whatever practice area you do in your city. So, you know, criminal defense attorney in Dallas or wherever you're at, whatever you do. And if you look at just page one, because that's generally what people care about, you have 10 results once you get below the maps because everything above the maps is something completely different. But it's just those 10 results. Half of those probably generally four to six are going to be directories, review sites and stuff like that. And so really you're going up against every other attorney who does what you do in your city for five spots on average. And that's just not something that you as a small business should really bother with doing because it's going to cost you upwards of a thousand dollars or more every month, more depending on, you know, how big your market is just to try to stay on page one. The other thing is that it's super, super risky for uh, small businesses, especially small law firms. Um, one of those reasons is because Google is constantly changing and updating its search algorithms. Um, they do this hundreds, sometimes thousands of times a year. And in fact, a couple of months ago, towards the end of July, Google made a pretty big algorithm change and it it messed up a lot of people's search results. Um, you know, I was looking around, there's a lot of forums going on where people were just freaking out. You know, the sites that were on page one were suddenly showing up on page nine. Some webmasters were literally just like, I'm just going to give up and I'm going to, you know, abandon this website altogether and just start all over. Um, so it got really bad. But the other thing, and I think that this is something that's really eye opening for a lot of people, is that Google doesn't make any money on SEO. So Google doesn't care how your how your site ranks. You know, it, it just because, uh, you know, a, a SEO company or marketing company says they're a Google partner, it has nothing to do with the fact that. Google can completely derail all of the investment and all the progress you've made on your rankings. Um, they can pull that carpet out from under you immediately because they're not, you know, they're not making any money on SEO. All of their money is getting made on Google ads. So that's what they care about. They don't care about what, you know, is being ranked. They're just constantly tinkering with their own algorithms just to try to make sure that the best sites end up showing up. Um, the last thing is just like any any website or any marketing strategy that's super focused on SEO creates a bad user experience for the human beings that are trying to actually hire you. Um, if you followed us on social media, I've been putting up uh, some bad SEO uh, reading websites or reading you know videos over the last few weeks, just listening and, and reading just the terrible web copy that comes from websites that are overly focused on SEO, where it's like all of these keywords are crammed into the headlines. Um, it's just bad, it's really bad. And so that's why our focus has always been on human beings and reaching the humans that are going to hire you and not necessarily the crawler bots that are gonna try to index the website. So with that, uh, Jana, what is the first thing that is generally more important than SEO? 
across that timing. It is building a brand. That is the first thing that is more important. And I will say those videos um, that you've done, I've watched them all when they pop up and they are amazing um, and bad at the same time. So go check them out if you get a chance. But building your brand is definitely more important than SEO. So you can see here a couple of the um, you know, points, but something that's really important to do online is to establish a presence and really resonate with people, especially on an emotional level. So let them know why is it that you became a lawyer in the first place? Um, I talked to a bunch of attorneys who have a very like close to their heart reason, especially estate planning attorneys or personal injury who may have seen um, like a close friend or a family member go through something really terrible and they, they, kind of got the short end of the stick. Maybe they weren't able to, you know, get a settlement. Maybe they saw, you know, um, assets go where they weren't supposed to because they didn't have the right, you know, plan in place. So they have these very valid and um, good reasons as to why they, um, you know, pick a certain area of law. And you want to make sure that that is conveyed online. So not only that, but showing why you're credible at what you do, not just why it's important to you and you're passionate about it, but why you're also really good at it. Um, and more importantly, why you're better than Joe Schmo down the street or, you know, um, Billy Bob, who happened to, you know, rank on page one of Google, if people are looking that way. But you want to make sure that people realize why you're so good at what you do. And, of course, we use the term expert loosely because we know sometimes you can't refer to yourself that way. But you can definitely insinuate that with your content and your web presence. Um, so you need to make sure that they realize why you're the person that they need to call. Yeah. And so while well, you can go ahead to the next slide, Doug, great comment there. Yes, there is more to SEO than just keywords. Um, that tends to be the most obvious and the biggest offender. Um, there's also backlinking where I, I've seen websites that will link to just other irrelevant areas just to as a, as a way to build the website's credibility. And what we're seeing a lot of now though, is that Google's kind of moving away from the quantity aspect. So it's moving away from, you know, where it may have rewarded people with 20 new blogs a week that were three paragraphs long, had a certain amount of keywords in it, certain number of backlinks going to different websites or different parts of their own website. They're moving away from that and moving back towards figuring out what's actually quality content. And the nice thing about that is when you are actually putting quality content out and you're writing for the human beings, the keywords that you're looking for are naturally going to appear. You don't have to worry about trying to force things in. You don't have to worry about trying to backlink because there's, you know, that aspect of it, especially inter website backlinking is I'm not seeing that as being as big of a priority and as much of a reward anymore. Um, but yeah, so, you know, to that point, there are other aspects uh, of SEO, but, um, the content side of things, especially the keywords and the headlines and things like that, that's, uh, generally what becomes the biggest offender in all of this. But, uh, back to, uh, number two here, uh, another thing that's really important, more important than SEO is just having a, an amazing looking website, right? So these, uh, two examples here are two websites that we've designed, um, and by the way, I think if you weren't aware, uh, Lawyerist had uh, a top 10 website list of 20, it was either 2020 or 2021. It came out this year. I don't know how they do their years. Um, but we had four of our websites make the top 10 list just because of just how great the designs were, the layouts, the user experience, all of that. And so um, that's, what's, that's what's really important because Look, you can spend all the money in the world or in at least all the money in your marketing budget on SEO, but if your website sucks, if it looks terrible, if it's a bad user experience, it doesn't make it super clear who you are, what you're actually there to help with or anything like that, you're going to be doing more harm than good. People are going to land on a website and be like, I don't know if this law office is even open anymore. I don't know if they do what I think I need them to do. I'm going somewhere else, all right? So that's that's one side of it. Um, but the reason, and, and it kind of goes back to what I was saying, you know, having a good website is more about, sure, it looks great. You know, the websites there that we've provided as an example for, uh, Jana has a whole list of other great examples that she can share with you um, if you decide to talk to her later on. But it's all about a good user experience. It's, it's good imagery. 
that, you know, really makes an emotional connection with, with your, with your audience and more on that in a second, but it also highlights expertise, really makes it obvious who you are and how you can help, you know, what exactly it is your area of expertise is and really provides a good user experience with good information, good surface level quality information. And on that note, if you want to go to the next slide um, and talk a little bit more about imagery here, don't have these images on your website, right? If you've got these images on your website, go get a Shame. new website right now, Shame. right? These are so outdated. They're so cliche. It's, you know, you have these images on your website. You're basically just saying, I just put these here because I didn't know what else to put or I don't care about visuals on my website. And I'm being a little harsh, you know, partly because it's entertaining for me, but also to drive the point home, your images should really make more of an emotional connection with your audience. So like, for example, um, estate planning lawyers, you know, you're, you're trying to convey that you preserve wealth for families for generations. So having that image of a family, maybe there's an elderly couple there with grandkids, you know, something like that, that really makes that emotional connection. That's what's really more important and what you should really focus on, especially first with your website, rather than trying to rank on page one of a Google search. I did good. I did good on timing. Number three of which you, you know, should be focusing on well before SEO is forming a really solid networking strategy. Now, most people that I talk to are very aware that networking is something that is fundamental. It is, you know, invaluable, something that I, almost everyone says, oh, like I, I know I should be networking or I know I should be doing more of this, but it's something that a lot of times I know it's tough to find time for because there are so many other things that, you know, need your attention throughout the day. So I definitely understand it, but building those relationships is so crucial to generate referrals. Um, having this, you know, network of people that can, you know, send potential clients your way and vice versa is incredibly helpful because referred clients say it with me are typically the best clients they they're the best are, clients they're the best thank you well we didn't plan that clearly so <laughs> we'll keep working on that but they are they're higher quality because they convert at a higher rate they're easier to work with they don't try and haggle with you on price there's so many reasons and so generating more of those from something like networking where you can also you know hang out with people even if you're an introvert like me and that kind of terrifies you um it's still a great thing to do um and so outside of just having happy hour or maybe lunch with somebody you can do virtual things because i know covid is, is very you know real still very prevalent you know in some places so virtual webinars or virtual happy hours anything you can do online maybe it's a one-on-one -on -one lunch with some other attorneys here and there or speaking engagements um, whether that's in person or virtual um getting in front of a big audience I know a lot of our estate planning attorneys will do seminars and workshops, and it's also a great way to, to generate new interest. And they typically also convert at a high rate from um, most of the people I've talked to who have done that. But having some sort of a consistent uh, networking strategy in place is way better than SEA. Yeah. So we've got a spot here for uh, a little bit of discussion, um, and especially since Doug is kind of falling asleep in the chat. So let's try to wake Doug up a little bit here. Um, what are some of the networking strategies that have worked for you? Throw some of those uh, ideas out in the chat because I think networking, networking is really where it all starts. That's where you're going to really start making sure that people in, in your immediate area know where your expertise is, is where they know um, what kind of business they should be referring to you. And um, okay, all right, I'm sorry. I got you, Doug. I, I, I understood what it was in reference to, Doug. Yes. Got you. Great. That's a great one. Yeah. Especially because <laughs> I think, thank you, Christian. So, you know, one of the things that I think a lot of people just assume is that networking is kind of an in-person thing, but LinkedIn is such a great, great uh, option, you know, especially in the virtual world, especially when you can't go network in person. It's a great uh, option. I know we've done uh, a center stage episode or two about networking strategies, and it's always good to just kind of get that feedback from, uh, from other people, what's working well for them. But um, even when it's like, you know, you're doing, you're working at your bar association, you got bar meetings you're going to, that's a great place to network. Um, 
all kinds of stuff like that, you know, but also just making sure that's a two way street, you know, make sure that you're actually at least feigning interest, you know, maybe you don't care, but, you know, definitely make sure that you you're showing that you care what other people are doing and, and showing that you can understand uh, what their needs are and how you can potentially work with them, you know, because, you know, even if it doesn't become a working referral relationship, there are other things that you can do, especially in teaming up with other business owners, even other attorneys. You know, you can start hosting joint events together. Maybe there's some overlap between some practice areas. Maybe someone who gets a divorce then later decides they want to start a business. So you probably need two different lawyers for that and all that. So, you know, good, good networking strategies um, really go a long way towards maximizing the overall results of your marketing, um, especially when it comes to your content, to the number of referrals that you're getting, um, all kinds of good stuff like that. All right, let us move on. So like I mentioned, uh, another important key here is making sure you attract the right clients. Um, some of you in this webinar right now might cons be considered a door lawyer. You know, maybe, you know, maybe you have on your website that you just practice family law and estate planning, but you'll also handle the traffic tickets that come in. You'll handle maybe a misdemeanor. Maybe you'll handle a car accident, something like that along the way. Don't do that. Right. If you, if you're a door lawyer, you're spreading yourself out really thin. You're, you know, you're, it's that whole jack of all trades, master of none sort of thing where you're constantly spreading yourself out. You're not really allowing yourself to really focus in on what you enjoy doing, which is a whole another conversation altogether, especially when we talk about burnout rates and, you know, mental health and all of that in the legal world, but also just being able to niche down and really focus on what you enjoy doing actually has a lot more long-term benefits than just your own mental sanity. Um, we've seen this happen a lot with our clients. They, they finally niche down. They really decide, okay, I am going to really just focus on business law. And even more than that, I'm just going to focus on helping people start businesses. And once you can really niche down on that, uh, you can really start to focus your marketing content on all of the different legal aspects of starting a business. Then people start seeing you as the lawyer for how to start a business. And that's what you become known for. That's what you become the expert in. And then that allows you to start charging those premium rates because we've used this analogy before, right, Jana? It's like, if you're going to get brain surgery, who are you going to go to? Brain surgeon. Exactly. You're not going to go to you know your regular everyday doctor for that. And it doesn't matter. And at that point, like once you find your specialist, it cost doesn't really matter. Now in the medical world, because you got insurance, that's fine. But in the legal world, it still doesn't matter because that's such a sensitive issue. And it's such a high stakes thing that knowing that you're working with the expert, with the specialist in that tends to make cost an afterthought. So you can charge those premium rates all of a sudden. Now you've got, a, you got more revenue coming in. Maybe you're either doing the same amount of work, but it's all the work you love doing, or you're doing less work, but still making the <laughs> same or more money, which then gives you more free time, gives you better mental health, all that kind of good stuff along the way. And it's, and it's not just aspirational. Like we've seen this happen with our clients and, and we've seen how all of this um, can really become successful and become a reality for a lot of people. And so the last thing I'll say on this before Jana, you can finish up, um, if you really don't know where to start, we have an ideal client checklist on our website. Uh, go check it out. Um, it really does help you build out that ideal avatar for who your perfect client is. And when you have that figured out, that's how you can really center your content on there and, and really focus in on bringing in the right people that you want to work with. Um, and I can throw in that link here in just a sec um, so you guys can get straight to that ideal client checklist download. And I saw a couple comments in the chat. You were correct. Nobody wants the great value discount brain surgeon. I might start using that one as well because that is so true. You, you don't. You want that, you know, that high quality name brand brain surgeon for sure. Was That was good. I'm I good to, I went to the next one. So we're, I hope that's Yeah, fine no, well, this, is your, this is your slide anyway. 
we're here now. This is this is me. This is the content loop for those of you who may have seen it before. It might look a little familiar, um, but this is really our proven process. And it's all about building this system to help you stay in touch consistently with your referral network. Um, so we talked about networking, you know, how you're going to stay in touch with all these people, meet them. Um, but then if you're only seeing them, you know, if you have lunch with them every several months and go to a networking event a couple times a year, while those are great, there's tons of other ways that you can stay in touch with them more frequently and, you know, probably more cost efficiently um, than having to go buy them dinner or, or buy them lunch every, you know, few months. But this content loop is a visual way that we've been able to kind of document our strategy of these consistent touch points that's keeping your network in the loop because it's called yeah. a content loop, right? And we all know of funnels, marketing funnels. I'm sure we've all heard of those, but guess what funnels do, John? What do they do? They end. They end. But guess what, what does not end? Loops. They go forever. Loop. Wow. We, I mean, we're pretty proud of this, but th that is the idea is that funnels are eventually going to spit that person out, whether they become a client or if they say no, or as a loop, if someone becomes a client, they're still getting nurtured in some capacity by your different marketing efforts. So they can still send people your way. And if someone says no for now, like that, that's the, the term that I always, you know, use it. It may be a no for now. It might not be the right time based on someone's situation, but it may be in a few months. And if you just let them go away because, Oh, it's not the right timing at this exact moment. What's going to happen in a couple months when it is time for them to, you know, look at these options again, you're right there. You've been in front of them the whole time. So I'm happy to dive more into the content loop with anybody who would like to. We have a whole report on it, but making sure that you're consistently staying in touch is the biggest takeaway. Yeah. And and to that point, you know, there, there are so many other ways to look at this. Um, one of the things that I, I like talking about is that it costs five times more to try to bring in new leads than it does to get repeat business or referrals from your existing network. And so that's where this content loop really has an advantage is that you have all of these people in your system. And just because they decided not to work with you, like Janice said, either not now or not ever, like doesn't necessarily mean that you've lost out on every single opportunity with these people forever. You know, maybe you just weren't the right fit. Maybe they were looking for someone to solve a traffic ticket, but you just handled divorces. That's fine. The, you getting them into your system, getting them into your loop, all of a sudden now you're creating consistent touch points with them. You're, you know, you're putting out emails to them. They're seeing you on social media, whatever the case is. And now you become kind of the first person they think of. You put, you're at the forefront of their mind on a consistent basis. And then maybe, maybe they don't need a divorce, but oh man, their friend's getting divorced. Hey, I know this lawyer, their content looks really good. I've been getting a lot of their emails. Go get, go check them out. All of a sudden, now you have a ton of, you know, a ton of new business sources, a ton of referral sources that you never would have had because you just weren't staying in touch on a consistent basis. So with that, that kind of wraps up this and I will, well, no, it's too late. No, we already went, sorry, sorry. I'm not, it, it's fine. I'm going to try to build it up a little bit, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, <laughs> not bad. So yeah, so this is a really cool exclusive announcement. We have not <laughs> let anyone else know about this yet. People, you are here in this webinar getting uh, the first look at this. And the reason that we're doing this is that Spotlight Branding is turning 10 years old this year. And Aww. to celebrate, we are doing this really cool giveaway to one lucky lawyer. And it's basically $30,000 in marketing service. It's, it's a huge in-depth, in-person experience that we're going to do. Um, and basically, we're going to fly the winner out to our Charlotte headquarters, first class, so you can drink on the plane for free, just come in feeling great. Uh, you'll have some one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions with our CEO, Mark Cerniglia. Uh, we'll do a video FAQ shoot for you. You'll have a strategy session with our writers where they will write up a whole year's worth of blog content for you and a few other nice goodies in there as well. Um, all of it valued at more than thirty thousand um, dollars. It's just it's the biggest thing we've ever done, and it's something really cool that we want to do, um, just to celebrate being a ten-year-old company. Because a lot of small businesses don't even make it five years. 
So we've been here for 10 years. We're going to, you know, probably do at least 10 more, I would hope. Um, I, you know, hopefully like 50, 100, who knows. <laughs> um, but but uh, something really cool here. So you guys are the first ones to actually know about this. So um, you can visit spotlightbranding.com slash makeover to learn more and to learn how to get entered into this giveaway. Um, we will announce the winner. Uh, we're going to be taking submissions through the rest of the year. So we'll announce the winner at the start of 2022. But um, yeah, man, you're going to get all this good stuff um, and a whole lot more. So head over to spotlightbranding.com slash makeover to uh, learn how to get entered and uh, see if you'll be the lucky winner. I did throw that um, link in the chat, um, as well as the ideal client um, resource that John mentioned earlier. Both of those are in there, so you can click and enter. Um, I will. The makeover one takes you right to a video, so if you click it now, the video will start playing automatically. Um, did you tell them how they get um, entries? I did I not. I really, okay. figured it would be on the I, landing page. It, I mean, it will be, so you can go there, but I will, yeah. you know, give you a spoiler as well. Essentially, you can get an entry. Um, it's like a raffle, so you, you get an entry. Um, anyone who, you know, schedules the time to talk further, whether or not you end up, you know, working with us, um, if you become a client or not, you'll still get that entry. But if you do end up signing up, you actually get more entries, um, which would be cool. Um, you know, increase your chances there. And I think you said going through the end of the year, so just over three months so yep. um you have some time but you know, you know. yeah cool yeah. all right you want to go to the final oh, slide I there i do i do um so yeah um oh, yeah. regardless of the giveaway you know we can still help you uh build a marketing foundation uh that's not uh dependent on seo um, you don't have to rely on Google rankings to get business or anything like that. Um, but we're happy to talk about it. Um, and a cool thing that we're doing uh, is we're going to, is we're doing this cool group strategy session. So it's even more, or I guess, I don't know how to say that it's, it's less pressure. There's no high pressure one-on-one -on -one sales pitch. You know, Jana's not going to get on the phone with you and corner you into decision. Not that she does that anyway. But um, yeah, it's going to be a group session. So all of you can, you know, so you can be in there with multiple people, have conversations, um, just kind of learn more about what we do. Um, so if you would like to do that, you can head over to that link right there and get registered for it. Um, the next group session, I think, is happening here in a couple of weeks. And so uh, Jana would love to have you there and talk to you a little bit more about uh, how we can help you out. I would, yes. And it honestly will be, you know, very similar to this. Pretty, pretty casual. I mean, d John may or may not decide he wants to join on. If you guys, you know, say you're not a fan, I can kick him out. That's fine. Um, but it's, you know, something where you guys can interact with each other just a bit, maybe have a bit of a, a brain dump um, and, you know, collaboration there on what's working, what hasn't before and learn more about what we do. Yep. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us. Uh, we were five minutes over, probably because we got started Sorry. late because the, we had some bugs to work out, but that's fine. Um, if anyone has any questions for us, uh, appreciate um, the activity in the chat today, Doug and, and Christian. That yes. was awesome. Thank I you. apologize for assuming that Doug got mad at us and bored, but I get what he was going for now. So I do appreciate it. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any questions uh, right now, we can address those. Otherwise, uh, I think I'm glad Doug's not a mad guy. That's good. Doug seems like a happy guy. But, um, but yeah, if anybody's got any guy. questions about what we talked about today or marketing in general, I'm happy to address those now. Uh, otherwise, that is going to do it for us. Uh, stay tuned for the next announcement. Uh, the recording and the recap email will also be going out uh, hopefully within the next hour or so. But yeah, I think that'll do it. Cool. And if you think of anything after, feel free to, you know, always email us. It's John or Jana at spotlightbranding.com. Yep. Awesome. But cool. Not too right. bad. Not too bad over. I'll be right at 30 once we cut out the front part where we, um, you know, struggled a little. You know. This wasn't bad. Uh, let us know, you know, if you, I like this platform. I like the, yeah. I think this worked pretty well. Cool. So yeah, we'll stick around for just a minute for any questions that pop up, but thank you guys all for, for coming in, listening, and participating. All right. Well, I think you can turn the broadcast off.
and I think we can get on out of here. I'll stop the recording.